Canada operated aircraft carriers post-World War II, including HMCS Warrior, HMCS Magnificent, and HMCS Bonaventure, all ex-Royal Navy ships. These were light carriers weighing around 15,000 to 20,000 tons used for trade protection and anti-submarine warfare. Since 1970, Canada has not pursued carriers, focusing instead on frigates, destroyers, and patrol ships. The Royal Canadian Navy's current fleet includes 12 Halifax-class frigates, four Victoria-class submarines, and six Harry DeWolf-class patrol ships, with Canadian surface combatants under development. Whether Canada should build a new aircraft carrier involves weighing strategic, economic, and operational factors. An aircraft carrier would significantly boost Canada's ability to project power globally, supporting NATO, UN, or coalition operations in regions like the Indo-Pacific or Arctic. It could serve as a mobile air base, enabling rapid response to crises such as humanitarian disasters or conflicts. Some argue that Canada is acquiring a carrier for sea control, disaster relief, or sovereignty enforcement, particularly with new generation VTOL aircraft. With the Arctic becoming increasingly accessible due to climate change, a carrier could bolster Canada's presence in the region, countering Russian and Chinese activities. It could support sovereignty patrols, search and rescue missions, and disaster response. A carrier equipped with helicopters or VTOL aircrafts could enhance Canada's ability to operate in harsh Arctic conditions, complementing existing Arctic offshore patrol ships. As a NATO member, Canada could contribute more significantly to allied naval task groups, which often include carriers like the UK's Queen Elizabeth class. A Canadian carrier could integrate with these groups, enhancing interoperability and burden sharing. Public discussions suggest that Canada could use a carrier in a non-traditional role, such as a U.S. Marine Expeditionary Unit-style platform for humanitarian and expeditionary missions. Building a carrier could leverage Canada's national shipbuilding strategy, creating jobs and sustaining shipyards like Irving or C-SPAN. Domestic construction aligns with Canada's history of building naval vessels, except for carriers and submarines. Fincan Terry, an Italian shipbuilder with expertise in carriers like Italy's Cavour, could potentially collaborate given its global reputation. On the other hand, some analysts argue that Canada does not need to build an aircraft carrier. The cost of building and operating a modern aircraft carrier is astronomical. For comparison, the UK Queen Elizabeth class carriers cost three billion pounds each, while the US Gerald R. Ford class costs $13 billion per ship. Canada's 15 Canadian surface combatants are estimated at $84.5 billion, with lifetime costs exceeding $306 billion. A single carrier could consume a significant portion of Canada's defense budget, estimated at 1.34% of GDP. Operating a carrier requires a carrier strike group like frigates, destroyers, submarines, supply ships, additional aircraft, and thousands of personnel. Canada's Navy, with only 33 ships and 8,400 personnel, cannot support this without massive investment. Canada's priorities focus on continental defense, Arctic sovereignty, and NATO contributions, none of which require a Blue Water supercarrier. The Royal Canadian Navy emphasizes frigates, submarines, and patrol ships for littoral and anti-submarine warfare, which are better suited to Canada's maritime needs. The historical context shows that Canada decommissioned its last carrier, HMCS Bonaventure, in 1970 due to high costs and shifting priorities toward anti-submarine warfare during the Cold War. Canada lacks the infrastructure, trained personnel, and aircraft to operate a carrier. The Royal Canadian Navy would need to double its air force to equip a carrier with modern jets, and training a crew of 1,000 to 2,000 would take years.
The Royal Canadian Navy's current focus is on replacing aging Halifax-class frigates and Iroquois-class destroyers with Canadian surface combatants, alongside maintaining four Victoria-class submarines. Diverting resources to a carrier could delay these critical projects. Amphibious assault ships or helicopter carriers, like the French Mistral class, are more cost-effective and versatile for Canada's needs. These could support disaster relief, troop transport, and helicopter operations without the complexity of a full carrier. In 2015, Canada considered but did not purchase two Mistral-class ships due to procurement delays. Such platforms could operate in the Arctic or Indo-Pacific, aligning with Canada's Indo-Pacific strategy. Italy's cab were 27,100 tons, and Trieste's 33,000 tons are smaller, multi-role vessels than supercarriers. They support F-35B helicopters and amphibious operations, aligning with Italy's regional focus. Canada's maritime needs are more Arctic-centric and less expeditionary, making a similar but smaller platform more practical than a supercarrier. So, some advocate for a carrier to boost Canada's global presence, while others see it as impractical and favor helicopter carriers or frigates. <laughs> 